It's a Scottish poem whose authorship is unknown. Let's move on to the poem. So in poem, I'll go stanza wise for better comprehension. In first stanza, the king of Scotland, he is sitting in his uh, town, Dumfallin town, where his royal residence is located and he is drinking blood red wine. So this blood red wine is symbolic of dominant attitude of king and suddenly he says that, oh, where will I get a skilly skipper to sail this new ship of mine? So he wants skilly skipper, a skilled captain to sail his new ship. Now we don't know why does he want someone to sail his new ship and he wants an skilled skipper. So next stanza talks about an elder knight who was very close to him. He suddenly got up who was sitting beside his knee and he said, uh, sir, I know one of, one of the skillish keeper in this town. His name is Sir Patrick Spence. I quote his words. He says that Sir Patrick Spence is the best sailor that ever sailed the sea. Then King, without any delay, he writes a letter, sent this letter to uh, Sir Patrick Spence. He seals this letter with his own hands and uh, this Sir Patrick Spence at that time he was walking on the strand on sea beach. So what did he write on letter to Norway, to Norway, to Norway over the fame, over the sea. So he wants Sir Patrick Spence to go to Norway over the sea via sea. Now, when Sir Patrick Spence receives the letter, he reads the, these two lines. He started laughing loudly. He thought a king was making fun of him. But when he read next two lines, uh, the king's daughter of Norway, it's thou Maun bring her him that the king's daughter of Norway she is kidnapped and you have to bring her home. So Sir Patrick Spence as he was a very brave uh, a captain without any delay he thought to obey king's command and he started uh, crying tears trickled down from his eyes and I quote he says that the next word that Sir Patrick read the tear blinded his eye then this Sir Patrick Spence as, as a human being, he started criticizing people who kidnapped King's daughter and he criticized the people, uh, especially someone who told his name to King. So he says that, oh, what is this that has done this deal and told the King of me and to, to sail this ship at this time of the year because this time of the year is uh, horrendous disastrous the sea is turbulent so at this time no one can sail the sea so uh, sir patrick spence is a little bit uh, upset with king's command but uh, as he was a very brave royal full of uh, uh, vitality and valor he suddenly uh, said very very uh, uh, inspirational line he says that be it wit be it wheat, be it hail, be it slit, our ship will sail. So because he now thought King's daughter is kidnapped and it is his duty now to bring her back. Uh, uh, bring her back. So here he says, be it wind, be it storm, be it wheat, be it monsoon, be it rain, be it anything, his ship will sail. And he says, the king's daughter of Norway, it's thou we have to bring her home. So now he takes a pledge. He, he calls all his um, uh, crew members together and they hoist their sail. They started their boat on Monday morning and they, they started it as with the speed they can. And they, uh, they landed in Norway on Wednesday. So the poet says that it, it has not been a week or week suddenly the lords of the norway started criticizing them they thought why are you here you have brought king's money and queen's money and you will waste your money and they uh, they even find that these people ha are here just to attack them so there are a lot of apprehensions about these the, about their journey then the uh, sir Patrick Spence, he, he he tells them he clarifies he says that no the, the money which I have brought with uh, with me or with us this money is will be used for good purpose not for bad purpose not not to attack you so he clarifies and he he, he goes further then uh, he, he says to his uh, people he says that make ready make ready my merry men our good ship sails the morn 
now ever alack my master dear i fear deadly storm then uh, sir pedro gispins he says oh merry men why does he call them merry men because they are very excited to obey king's command they are because they are going to have uh, an adventure so all of them they are very happy to obey his command and one of one of the crew members he said oh alas my master i fear a storm deadly storm uh, in future so he says that and, he, and then poet talks about uh, uh, 13th century uh, uh, omen, bad omen, when uh, two moon they come side by side. So he says that I saw the new moon late years screen with the old moon in arms. So a kind of eclipse situation, it, it, it was supposed to be a bad omen in 13th century. and. Uh, he, that, that, that fellow says, no, uh, my, my master, I feel that we all may harm, we all may die because the, the sea is turbulent and this is a bad omen. At this time of the year, even Sir Patrick Spence has told in the beginning that they, they could not sail properly at this time of the year. So same thing happens again. Then it, ha it has not been a league or league, uh, a certain distance in the sea. Suddenly uh, the, the atmosphere grew dark. The wind started blowing and the sea became girly. Girly means curly. A kind of uh, a tsunami situation came in, in sea. And uh, all these people, they are upset now. They are panicked. And suddenly the anchors of the ship broke. And the topmost lap, the sails, they fell down in water. And the waves came inside. Salty water came inside. And, uh, and all the sides of the ship started uh, collapsing or shattering into pieces. A kind of, uh, uh, you might have seen a m movie, Titanic movie, a same kind of situation is happening in here. Then uh, this uh, Sir Patrick Gisman says, he says, uh, he, he goes up on ladder because earlier we didn't have uh, uh, electric uh, ship or uh, ships which are run by fuel we had just sails so the this sir Patrick expenses go he goes up to check the direction whether they were heading uh, uh, towards their uh, destination but he says but I want someone who can take the wheel helm and sail the sea as he was doing earlier because he was the best sailor remember uh, as poet says so then suddenly one fellow he takes charge he takes the wheel he starts uh, propel uh, the ship then it has not been a step step suddenly what happens you know uh, the water came inside and all these people and uh, they are full of tension they it's a question of their survival now so they say now please do one go down in, in deck and bring uh, silk cloth to tie around the ship is it possible to save a ship with silken cloth? No. But now here they are so upset they want to uh, survive so for that they are doing very silly things in, in this poem. Then one uh, they brought one silken cloth, they wrapped the ship uh, with that cloth but still the poet says the water came in. So it's highly impossible to save uh, this boat with silken cloth. Then uh, in next uh, stanza they were very brave but they were human beings they started criticizing the king of scotland to send them at this time of the year they say o light o light were our good scot lords to wait their cock healed shoon now they they, they believe that the, the king of scotland they he's sitting there and all other lords they are just sitting they are sitting there peaceful they have sent us at this time of the year to die and their cock heel shoon the shoes which are made of wood uh, wooden shoes even this he says even if their shoes are not wet and we are wet up to cap it means we are about to we, we are about to drown so uh, we are about to uh, drown then uh, he, he talks he says that uh, but one day the game will be played almighty is just one day they will have to pay the price for their wrong deeds then next uh, thing he talks about money because they have brought money with them the money was scattered on sea now here uh, he, he provides uh, mo uh, moral lessons to us a kind of uh, didactic situation here where he says that the money is a kind of feather bird money is kind of a uh, kind of son he compares money with son who goes away never comes back so here again the last four stands are very emotional where their wives are waiting on sea beach because they they thought their uh, their uh, husbands who went with Sir Patrick Gispens, they'll come victorious. So all of them, they are in their well-dressed, they are having kaim means combs in their hands and they are just waiting for them. And uh, just I quote, uh, it says that 
the ladies rang their fingers white and the maidens tore their hair for the sake of their true loves for them they'll see na mire so poet says that all these ladies they were rubbing their fingers because they were intention whether uh, their uh, partners will be alive or not because the sea is really turbulent as they have accepted in the poem so all these women they are, they are waiting there but poet says that they are waiting for whom they will see no more so the poet has given us as hint that all th those people who went to bring king's daughter they are there now then long long they are waiting there and uh, they, they were waiting for sir pedro gispens and uh, and uh, and his 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 people who went with him then all these uh, women at last because the poet says that they were standing at aber door it's an aberdeen scotland it, it's an island in scotland they are they are uh, waiting there and suddenly what happens you know when boat arrives at uh, beach in boat they found nothing but dead bodies sir patrick spence was uh, at the top and all other people they were lying under his feet so in this poem we learn that sir patrick spence he was a, a brave uh, he was a brave a brave captain he was full of uh, uh, valor and uh, he was patriotic because when king or king gave him command without second thought he started to sail his ship with his crew members so here we get to know about his character we get to know about various themes in the poem about true love we get to know about uh, king uh, the, the brutal king brutal king dominant king so uh, this the whole poem it talks about king and his journey to save king's daughter which he he couldn't do in that course he he dies so uh, if you like uh, the summary of this poem please subscribe to my channel and uh, follow me on youtube for such kind of videos thank you very much